my name is Lane Raspberry. I, unlike Eliter, I do contribute uh, to Wikipedia articles directly. I'm most interested in health articles. And to tie in some of the things that uh, Eliter was saying, uh, I'm going to be, uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm going to briefly introduce the topic of open access, and I'm going to say why the, the concept of open access matters for health information on the internet. So one of the things that we just heard was that there was a project called the Visual Editor on Wikipedia. And what the Visual Editor does, it allows people who don't, haven't learned the Wikipedia interface to contribute to any Wikipedia article. So the idea behind Visual Editor is to invite anybody, even people who uh, haven't spent time learning Wikipedia, to be able to contribute productively to the project. Something else that we just heard was that there's precedent for various organizations, especially cultural institutions like museums, to take an interest in the quality of Wikipedia articles. Like, for example, some museums will donate images of their collections. These are stored on Wikimedia Commons, the media repository, and then they're integrated into the Wikipedias of different languages. And the idea is that the museum is uh, expanding their educational mission onto Wikipedia by uh, putting the content where people are likely to find it. And as it turns out, there's a lot of people who are, are very likely to seek content on Wikipedia. Now, I'm interested in health content. And in the field of health, or in, in science in general, one of the major problems of the field is that science information, it typically is first published, or it comes to the world through scholarly academic journals, just, just any kind of academic journal that uh, a library might subscribe to, or, or especially that would be associated with a university or research library. The problem is that for different reasons, it's difficult for libraries to subscribe to all the journals that they would like for their, uh, their, their patrons or library visitors to have access to. There's a, a new model for getting greater access to scholarly academic information to the public. And that model is commonly called open access. What open access is, it, it's transferring the cost of publication from something other than a subscription or a toll to read a given article to some other kind of funding model. So what this means in practice is that if somebody wants to read a research article published uh, in, a, in, a, in a traditional academic journal, they should be able to read this free of cost, just on the request. And the way that these would be distributed now, that they couldn't have been distributed at any other time in history, is through the internet. So if somebody wants to read an article through the internet, the costs are less for each individual reading it than they would be if they were having to have a paper journal actually delivered to them in some way. So the dream behind open access is that uh, any media that's online, especially scholarly academic media, should be available to anybody who wants to read it on request. How about that? So I, I'm only going to be talking briefly about this, but I, I wanted to give an overview of health information on Wikipedia. And what I would like to impress upon you is that there's significant numbers of people who are going to the internet to get health information. And a barrier to their being satisfied is lack of access to the original sources of health information, which are the academic articles in which health information is published. So I, I would assert that Wikipedia is important and that people should consider the quality of information on Wikipedia because it's just so popular. It's uh, one of the most popular websites in English language. In, in many languages, it's, it's the most popular source of information. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out. I'm, I, I, I can't really back it up, but I, I've heard it asserted that Wikipedia might be the most widely read single publication in history. And part of the reason behind that is is that it's read continually. It's not like a newspaper that would be have, publish an article and then that article would become obsolete. No one reads the old news. But Wikipedia, any given Wikipedia article, is, is read continuously, the same article. It gets updated, but it's still the same article. And for that reason, uh, any given Wikipedia article is, is very often very popular. 
why is Wikipedia so popular? Well, it's because Google is preferentially serving Wikipedia articles when people are putting in, in a query, and I, I could see other search engines, Yahoo being, I don't want to um, uh, favor any commercial entity, but it, it seems to be the case that uh, with any search engine, if a person types in a term and there's a corresponding Wikipedia article that matches that term, the search engine is directing people to that Wikipedia article, if not first, then among the first returned results. Uh, one might ask, supposing that people were going to Google and they were typing in health terms into Google search engine, maybe uh, they've been diagnosed with diabetes and they want more information about diabetes, or maybe the doctor has prescribed them a certain drug and they type in the name of that drug into Google. Uh, I'm telling you, because uh, I, I've experienced this, I, I, I know it to be true, that Google is very often returning Wikipedia articles in response to search queries. So some people might say, well, anybody can edit Wikipedia. Isn't it irresponsible for people to get any amount of health information from Wikipedia? Shouldn't they always go to their doctor and get this information? As it turns out, not everyone has a doctor available. Some people find it convenient for whatever reason to consult Wikipedia sometimes. And I'm not saying that anybody should plan their health around what Wikipedia says. I'm just saying Wikipedia has its purpose, and Wikipedia health articles are very popular. And right now, there's not any coordinated effort by any particular organization to ensure that the quality of health information on Wikipedia is the best. Just the Wikipedia community is the only group managing this. What I would say to any of you is that if you had interest in, in health or anything else, you've, you've, just, you, you've been talking for some weeks about how easy it is to edit Wikipedia. And uh, it's just the case that if somebody were to make constructive, good, edits, contributions to Wikipedia in compliance with Wikipedia policy, then what they have to share would immediately begin to be accessed by huge numbers of people in a short amount of time. I'd really like to see people in healthcare education spend more time developing Wikipedia articles within their field of expertise, because I really think it matters. Just to give you some idea of what kind of content is on Wikipedia, there's more than 20,000 articles. Uh, about 2,000 of those articles have been through a peer review process internally in Wikipedia and uh, evaluated as, as quite good, certainly better than average. And the, the community on Wikipedia is, is doing even more with health articles. Uh, here's, I have some more data. It's showing that it might be the case that Wikipedia is the most popular source of health information on the internet. Perhaps Wikipedia is the most popular source of health information in the world. There's some problems with this data. If, if anybody wants to know more, I could, I could speak about this. But certainly Wikipedia, at the very least, is an extremely popular source of health information. So, so uh, just as an example, I'm, I'm working with an organization called the ADIM Foundation. That's American Board of Internal Medicine. Uh, they've got a partnership with another United States-based organization called Consumer Reports, and we're contributing a lot of health information to Wikipedia. Now, why this matters, or how this relates to open access, is that from the health organizations, the health organizations are recommending scholarly academic journal articles to contribute to Wikipedia. And then those uh, academic information, which is supposed to be the consensus of the medical field, is supposed to go into Wikipedia articles. So in, in the course of this happening, it's, it, it, it happens sometimes that the health information that these organizations actually want to get out to the public is not available for anyone to read for free. That is, sometimes an organization will have a message, but all the published sources which are sharing that information are not free for the public to read. And I would say because of the conflict between open educational resources and the fact that many educational resources, in fact, aren't open, that's a, a problem for society. And it's something that continually needs to be addressed and, and thought about. Uh, the impact uh, of, of getting health information out um, I, I think it, it's been great. Uh, millions of people have, have seen the articles into which these scholarly academic publications are, are being put, 
and when I say that the, the scholarly information is being shared, I mean it's being converted into layman terms first. So it's something that's accessible in the way that any Wikipedia article would be accessible. So uh, I, I hope that I've impressed upon you all that there's routes by means of which academic information, which the, the layman public tr traditionally hasn't read so much, is beginning to read now. And in fact, if hobbyists, amateurs, and uh, even scientists, uh, students, would have greater access to literature, which is currently restricted by copyright, more of that would end up on Wikipedia, and more of that would be able to benefit uh, society and the people who wanted to read it. And Matt's going to follow up by saying some things about the amount of traffic, people who are going to learn about open, open educational resources, and uh, some more about the, the concept behind these things themselves. Thank you.